This is how we spend a few relaxing days in Milan. It really involves iconic landmarks, coffee, pastries, an immersive experience, some pasta, spinning around, and I guess more food. We're very excited to visit Milan for the first time. So let's begin. So this is a weekend trip from Czech Republic. We arrived at this airport and it's really simple to get to Milan City. When you're ready, simply stroll over to one of the desks selling bus tickets to Milan Central and you're good to go. Outside bus stop number three. They run almost constantly and there are always enough buses available. So I don't think you need to reserve ahead of time. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, that was like super easy. You just got off the plane. So convenient. And then as soon as you step outside, there's like eight or ten like bus companies all going to Milan Central. Um, you don't have to book in advance. They're running like all the time. So yeah. Uh, yeah. How was it? It was okay. I didn't feel that sick, so it was good. Nice. That should really quick. Like hour, right? Yeah. And this is like 4 or 5 p.m. so I really thought it'd be like traffic, but it was nothing. Oh. Alrighty. On the way to the Airbnb. <laughs> the instructions. <laughs> Paper. You don't want to go, right? <laughs> so old school. You, you took off. <laughs> <laughs> so we booked this Airbnb for the sake of conveniency. From here, it's a short walk to the bus station where we'll catch the bus back to the airport. Now after a quick dinner, we headed to bed, excited for the next day. Thank you. You're welcome. It's <laughs> good. It's awesome. The main uh, uh -huh. viewpoint. Front, yeah. mm. 
Our first stop is at one of the most iconic landmarks in the city, Duomo di Milano. Now, no matter what time of day it is, morning, afternoon, or night, seeing this magnificent cathedral will always be very crowded and for many good reasons. Firstly, we did buy tickets for the inside and the rooftop area, but first we needed to take a few hundred photos of the front because it's a beautiful cathedral. Before we go inside, I want to explain about the dress code and the ticket system because I saw a lot of frustrated people being denied or not getting a ticket. So the Duomo shop is where you can purchase tickets to see the various parts of the cathedral. To purchase a ticket, you can use the self-service machines or you can go to one of the counters. However, buying a ticket on the day is not a good idea, especially during the peak season. Going to certain sections like the rooftop area is always sold out. We purchased our tickets from the Get Your Guide website a week ahead, which worked out great for us because we didn't miss out on the rooftop experience. Now there's actually a dress code to enter the cathedral, which is why you'll see people on the street selling sarongs, or you might even see a vending machine selling some kind of raincoat thing. Now believe me, they do check. I saw a few people getting denied entry, even with a ticket, so keep that in mind. And when you go inside, you have to have covered shoulders, knees, and no hats, and they are really checking it. So we are going inside. Right? All right, here we go, inside. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> So what makes this cathedral so stunning or even worth visiting? Well firstly, it took over six centuries to complete and even still today, there is constant restoration work going on to keep this building looking good. It's also the only cathedral in the world where you can walk on its entire rooftop and with a thousand statues, figures and gargoyles, it is really beautiful to see up close. Walking all over the rooftop of a 13th century cathedral is definitely a unique and rare experience. One thing I regret is not timing our visit on the rooftop to see the sun go down because as you can see the views from up here are really something special. Next we headed inside and this is where we saw some people being denied entry so again make sure to have the right clothes. So one popular statue that seems to turn heads is the statue of Saint Bartholomew. Apparently there is a horror story behind this. At first glance, it might seem that the saint has a cloak draped over his shoulders, but it is actually a mantle of his own skin. According to legend, this saint was executed and skinned alive. So in artwork, he frequently holds his own flayed skin. It's really something to see. This whole place is massive and it will take a good 20 minutes to soak it all in and see the highlights. I think coming to Milan and seeing this amazing cathedral at least once is a must.
Yes, sir. Thank you. I take it back in the back, made it. This is Milan's oldest active shopping mall. The Galleria is home to a lot of clothes stores and in addition to several restaurants, cafes and bars. The place really contains a lot of high-end brands, but it's still a beautiful place to admire. One thing I notice is everyone spinning on a bull. And apparently, if you spin three times with your heel on this bull's sensitive area, it will bring you good luck or make your wishes come true. I couldn't figure out how this practice began, but you can see from years of people spinning on the one spot that there is a large gap. Right in the Galleria is a famous pastry shop that has been around since 1824. Upon walking in, it feels like you're stepping back in time, where velvet pistachio colored chairs and walls were still a thing. It's a very interesting design. The drinks, cakes and pastries themselves were great. It's a great place to stop by and get a coffee, or just even have a look at. The original pastry shop is also in Milan, but it is a little bit smaller than this location. Croissant. That is awesome cafe in the metro. for three. 7 euro 60. 7 euro 60 for one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Today, we're hitting up some more tourist attractions and starting at this amazing castle. This iconic fortress with its rich history dating back to the 15th century has so much to offer. You can simply walk around and soak it all in, but you'll also find several museums and art collections, including masterpieces by renowned artists such as Michelangelo. It's really a treasure trove of Italian art showcasing centuries of creativity and talent. It must be really strong for it to rip that. After sightseeing, the rest of the day was spent shopping for clothes, but we also had something fun planned for tonight. It's a co working space as well. Lampo is located a bit outside the main tourist area of Milan, but it's definitely worth coming to. This used to be a railway yard, but now they use this place for holding special events, art exhibitions, and an industrial looking bar. This entire location will eventually be developed into a massive public park to help combat Milan's air pollution, creating another gorgeous park to explore when visiting this city. So we came here to see the Van Gogh immersive experience. Even though this isn't exclusive to Milan, it was still amazing to see. Seeing his artwork come alive was really incredible, and I'm looking forward to exploring more immersive art experiences in the future. I really love this venue too because after some souvenir shopping we got to finish our day and time in Milan with the classic Aperol Spritz. Our two days in Milan were really relaxing. The city is well designed to move around easily and you don't always need to jam pack your day with heaps of tourist activities. I hope this video has helped you, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.